Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to decide which target that you should be focusing down, which target you should be striking. You know, generally like, do I focus this destroyer or do I focus this cruiser or battleship that's in front of me? Stuff like that. I did make a post on the YouTube um, channel and asked everyone what they generally want to see. And a lot of people were asking about target prioritization. So this video is going to be dedicated to that. I'm going to be taking some VODs from my live stream because it is the easiest uh, for me that way. It is the most um, time efficient, uh, especially right now because my work schedule is a little bit um, it's a little bit on the heavier side. So uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and go with the video. I'm going to be jumping around here and there with different moments and clips and talking about which target I struck and why I, go I went after them. I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm going to show two different games here, and the first game, um, we're playing as Midway, and I actually run Tiny Tim's on my rockets. Why I run them, that will be explained in a different video, I feel like that's a topic for all of, you know, for itself, but the very first strike, I generally want to start out with rockets, or my weakest ordnance type, which are, <clears throat> in Midway's case, it is the rockets. I value my dive bombers more, uh, so that's why I do start with this squadron first, as I merely as a scouting tool and getting the first initial strikes in giving my team and, my, um, and myself enough intel on who's going to at least two caps. And with this, you see that I do strike the Conqueror, and I'm going to pause it right here really quick. So uh, my path I went was in between A and B. So I, this way, I spot the ships going to A cap, I spot the ships going to B cap, and as I'm striking a ship um, down mid, I pass through over to C cap. I pretty much just spot everyone, or at least majority of their other team so that gives me and myself uh, sorry that gives me and my team more than enough intel for me to set up my second strike and for my teammates to make rotations if necessary the second strike here i'm gonna skip forward a little bit more so we see that i'm actually talking you can see that my mouse is moving around i'm talking to my chat of who to focus i was basically saying i don't have to go anywhere near c cap at all this game unless they somehow win um, that side, the the enemy team wins that side, mainly because if we look at our mini map, because we did the first strike over covering A and B, we found pretty much everyone on their team, and we know that a few ships will be rotating over to C cap, but majority of their ships are going to be over on A and B, so that's why I was hovering my mouse over C cap, and right now I do start out with my um my second squadron, which are my torpedo bombers. And I'm trying to get a strike on either the Hindenburg or the Conqueror if possible. I know that the Harugumo is in the cap, so I'm not going to deal with the Harugumo right now. She can take that cap, um, and plus she's smoking up so I can't strike her anyway. So I have no DDs or any cruisers to really provide a crossfire on that um, ship if I do decide to go after the destroyer. So right now I'm just ignoring um, B cap, giving it up to the enemy team, and then I mainly prioritizing prioritizing on dealing damage to this conqueror who is pretty much bow in to my to both he's brought side to the schlieffen and then he's bow into these ships here getting a strike off on this pretty much just letting the enemy team spread out a little bit um you see how everyone even though i want to talk about this really quick we do go for the strike on the conqueror but even though even though we don't uh, we aren't focusing anyone else right now, only one ship. Notice how hard the Hindenburg has to turn. Because because we are striking the Conqueror, we're setting ourselves up for a second strike, as well as spotting everyone who is between A and B. FDR already turned around and everyone is already starting to turn and make kiting maneuvers. We get a strike on the Conqueror, and we see the Hindenburg is hard turning, so we go in for our second strike on the Hindenburg. But then she actually turns back in. And then I was pinging the Hindenburg because she would actually kind of play with her rudder a little bit there. But, um... See, I go back a little bit. 
she, I thought she was gonna hard turn towards me, but she actually sits broadside for a little bit. And the reason why she did this, I'm assuming, is because there's actually no one. There's actually no one shooting at her. There's no one on the on my team that can even shoot anyone on A and B. So um, I was a little disappointed, but I mean, it happens a lot on this map. Nothing you can really do. So early phases of the carrier majority of carrier games is um, giving intel to your team. And which is usually like a uh, basically a, a waiting game. You're basically letting time tick down, um, just trying to stall a little bit, trying to figure out how exactly you should be going about your strikes, where the enemy team is positioning, catching enemy ships off guard or who are out of position. In this case, um, I do have unique upgrade on midway, so I per I prioritize my dive bombers the most. And you see me moving actually closer to A cap because this is the cap we're gonna have to contest. I have my div mate here, and then um, we have the Schlieffen, the Druid, the Hindenburg. So I'm gonna try to support them as much as possible. I have a Vermont with me, so I'm not too worried about anyone trying to rush up because then he, um, he'll be able to back me up with the Hin pushing Hindenburg or um, the Harugumo. Now. I have dive bombers running. The reason why I did this was because first I wanted to actually strike the Preussen. Notice how he's bow into this island. This would be a perfect strike on the Preussen. But the issue with this is our entire team is getting outspotted by their one destroyer. If I do go for the Preussen here, not only well, there's fighters now, but if let's say fighters weren't there, um, if I go for the Preussen right now. Not only will I be in the Ohio's anti-air, I'll be flying through after my dive bomb strike into the Venezia, into the Conqueror, and then if I wanted to turn up north, potentially into the Hindenburg, or rotate south, which will get me kind of locked up on the on the border, and I'm going to have to either recall my planes, or try to get a chain strike and pretty much give up my entire squadron, right? So what I decided to do instead is go after the gearing, focus the destroyer down, because if we if we remove this gearing from the board right now, notice how everyone has everyone is turned and angled and kiting away, but they all have guns pointed in this general area. That's what I'm assuming. If we remove this gearing, that'll be huge for our team. It'll let our Schlieffen, it'll, it'll give him room, it'll give our go to line room, it'll give our droid even more room so he can roam all over A cap. And we get a really good strike there. Notice how gearing or the druid is the one who's just opening up. <clears throat> From this point, Hindenburg wasn't shooting at the gearing, but oh well. And there's a little trick you can do with dive bombers. You can actually turn them really, really easily. That's the strength of HE dive bombers. Get some strikes in in there. Removing the gearing. And pretty much the gearing goes down here. I believe the... Um, I believe the druid actually finishes him up. Let's see here. And now... The gearing goes down, and you see the Preussen immediately made a U-turn, and now he's running away. So now that the gearing is is removed from the board, that's two D uh, that's two DDs already gone, and this is going to already be a pretty easy game because when the enemy team loses destroyers first over your own destroyers, that's a huge advantage because not only are the spotting removed. You know, torpedo threats, smoke utility, all that kind of things, it's just gone from the enemy team. And now that A cap is opened up, I can pretty much do whatever I want for the time being. We still need caps, which is the biggest thing. So, what I need to do is I need to decide what target I want to focus down and figure out what my next play is going to be. And I decided to go after Conqueror here because after I finish my strike with the Conqueror, fly over away from all this a uh, anti-air bubble and now it's only the it's only the conquerors AA hitting me now i peek into the hindenburg a little bit but i mean it's not going to really be any you know that big of a deal because long range hindenburg aa it's like nothing so my rocket strikes are generally more of like a like i said before a stalling um stalling squadron because there's nothing else for me to really do right I'm not going to use my dive bombers on this or my torpedo bombers. They're too grouped. This group over here is too grouped. So I'm going to be losing my planes um, guaranteed. So my only targets here is... I see the Conqueror is alone now, yet again. 
I also see the Hindenburg. And then I also see a lone Jinan. The Jinan is out of the question. She's on C cap, way too far for me. I can let my team do whatever they want to the Jinan. But it's it's a 4v1, right? Harugumo is going to be the other option. The reason why I don't go for the Harugumo here. Because she's not a threat to, my, to anyone on my team right now. We spot her behind this island. The most that she can do is rush the Zhao. But if she rushes the Zhao, Vermont, Schlieffen, Hindenburg, they're all going to open up on the Harugumo. So that'll be a um, trade. I'm not too worried about that. What I'm going to be trying to do is trying to try to make the most out of my out of my time. Strike the Conqueror. We go. You see here, I'm making a strike for the Conqueror. And then I turn into the Harugumo. Because that's when Harugumo... I see Harugumo beaches. I don't know why she beaches. <laughs> I guess she just found out that she was being hydroed by, by the Zhao. I was like, oh. Harugumo beached. Okay. This is a free strike for me. So she's pretty much trapped. This is this is a free destroyer kill and a, basically a free win on you know, after we remove her from the ward. Midway dive bombers doing midway uh, midway dive bomber things. If you land like three bombs, that's like half of the HP. It's pretty disgusting, but um. So yeah, not only you don't always have to rush down destroyers. I like I, I see a lot of people talking about that this CVs spot and focus destroyers, and while they are. One of the best at doing their job at de at dealing with destroyers. Well, most of them. That's not always like a high priority target in many situations like this. So uh, now that the, the Harugumo is dead, all three destroyers are down on the enemy team. I see C cap is one. I'm totally ignoring C cap. I'm only looking at right here on the mini map, A and B. This is where majority of the fight is. This is where I'm closest to. Um, so C cap is just out of the question because. Carriers nowadays are more focused around um, time efficiency, how well you make your um, your strikes, how well you know how much time you put into your strikes and making it worth it is a big part of rework carriers uh, nowadays. <clears throat> now I see the A cap is pushing in. They're doing a really big push, right? Their final like push that they have to do to even try to take back uh, this this cap. I do load up my torpedo bombers, I pre-drop because I'm not going to get a second strike off on this. Ohio, Poison. Poison is probably full secondary build if I were to guess, which buffs up anti-air as well. And then Ohio, the, the usual American battleship anti-air. I'm not going to get two strikes off on this, especially because I don't have my torpedo HP upgrade. I have die bomber HP upgrade. So my torpedo bombers are st are going to be just so squishy. You know that's how they all they all died, <laughs> all six. Uh, they all just died. All right, we land a beautiful torpedo bomber um, run on that Ohio. So he's flooding. He's dead. Everyone is focusing him down, and he, he's he's out of the picture. I I decided that I'm not gonna. Pre I, I was I was gonna pre-drop this, but I noticed how quickly the the Ohio was going down. So I'm just like, okay, no, I'm gonna hold on to it. Now I just pretty much go after the poison. This is like. This isn't even like a high skill, you know, thought process. It's just farming a battleship now. Removing him from the board easily opens up the map. He's already half HP. Like this guy is already dead. And then once we deal with the poison, and then Venezia is going to be coming out of the smoke. And then I'll let my team do whatever they want to her. <laughs> nice six bomb drop. Lovely. I do show my build here because someone was asking for it here. Let me try to go back and show it again. I'll just pause here guys want to see the build but um i go full investment into midway um midway bombers so i have the unique upgrade i have the bomb upgrade and then i have the bomb speed i run anti-flak because a lot of ships nowadays are just grouping up so um this is why i do run that anti-flak and bomber skill you can run torpedo um torpedo protection um, damage increase but uh it's pretty much your choice i know some people who invest more into torpedoes but I prefer to go more into bomber focus because <clears throat> I, I spam bombs like a lot. So here's me um, clearing out this final ship on A cap, going after the Venezia. Venezia is very tricky um, for a carrier to really focus down because of how how well it turns. But when you catch it in a crossfire like this, it is not able to turn at all. It opens it up for an easy strike. You can't turn, or else she throws broadside to their sleeping. Or otherwise, she just eats torpedoes. 
So there's a power with carriers. Uh, you go to get a really good uh, crossfire um, opening on that. And then the rest of the game is just self-explanatory. You just farm now. The game is pretty much won. You killed, you focused and killed the destroyers. You focused and killed the conqueror, who's bow in. Poison just dies because it's you know it's 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 end of the game, and he's alone. Ohio just got focused down by our entire team. So this is pretty much just now at this point. You just free farm, do whatever you want. I'm just showing the bomb bomber drops because I mean, it looks really nice. I think I get all six again. Yep, all six lands. Yeah, so pretty much that's the end of game one. Um, nothing else to really talk about here. Just focusing uh, the final targets here and nice, I believe, is 175k. But uh, yeah, that's game one. I'll go ahead and move over to game two. All right, and here we are at game number two. I'm playing as MVR this time, so this will be in pretty, this was a pretty close game. It was, I believe, it was like a 200 plus thousand damage game. So um, we actually we actually beat them at the very end, which is very shocking. I thought we were going to lose this game, but this is a really hard game to uh, to win this round. So hopefully it'll be interesting. But yeah, so I already did my first initial strikes. All right, mainly focusing on A and B because I spawned here. And I see how they're all grouping up here. This so, in case you guys can't see, I'll try to zoom in during the edit. But there's a Des Moines, Ohio, Hampshire, Palmer, and I believe there is a Minotaur sticking around over here-ish. Um, but I started out with uh, my second strike with rockets, and I'm going to be trying to focus out that Hampshire or Des Moines. But Ohio is already in a really safe spot, and then there's the Minotaur. I didn't even realize the Minotaur was there. I was like, okay, well. I'll just go in for it. Don't want to waste too much time. Minotaur being Minotaur, able to turn while keeping its speed. The usual. So we only do like 7k damage to it. I lose my entire squadron. That's a really bad uh, a really bad attack run. And so I keep a mental note. Got to be careful of that Minotaur. Now, I do see here... When I, load up, when I load up my next squadron, I do like to keep a little rotation. Torpedo bombers, rockets, and then the dive bombers. I load up my dive bombers and I see the Des Moines was spotted right here, bow in by the island. What this means is he can only reverse, or if he wants to accelerate, he needs to leave now and gamer turn um, full broadside, right? Against my, he's not gonna do that because there's my entire like flank on this side, all having shots on him. So what this means is I can actually go in for a strike on the Des Moines and hopefully try to kill him. I pre-drop this because insane amounts of AA here. He's already half HP, so I'm like, okay, three citadels, he's out. But again, MVR RNG doesn't really connect, so I only get two citadels, and then, you know, he lives with about like a thousand HP or something like that. I'm really unlucky, but oh well, who cares? MVR things, right? Now, we notice Ohio is pushing in for some reason, and this means it is a really easy a uh, really easy kill for us. So what I do is, I notice the Ohio is pushing in. I'm, hey, it's a free kill. Just recall my squadron, send back, uh, send out my torpedo bombers because they're the bit most suited for this. There we go. So the Ohio is going to die here. In my mind, I'm like, okay, the Ohio is dead. There's no way he survives this. He's already have everyone is shooting at him, right? Her submarine is here. My torpedo bombers, maybe a flood, maybe a broken engine. Who knows, right? Anything like that. But he's going to go down. Now, while I'm doing this strike, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep a mental note of their highest threats. The most threatening anti-air. There's a Des Moines. Hampshire's AA is actually pretty decent. And then there's the Minotaur. Minotaur's over here on the on the edge with the Hampshire now. Des Moines is still here, chilling. I'm keeping a mental note of that. And this strike, I just don't get off because it's Minotaur, Hampshire, AA, right? We kill the Ohio. And now my, I uh, try to save this last plane, but my next run die bombers again because i see that des moines is still stuck bow in now we're just taking a guess where he's gonna be i'm not really too sure so i'm letting my 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 team actually spot him for me because well the previous runs we lost pretty much our entire squadrons every single time so i'm not gonna go send them out there again it's gonna be a suicide run and i'm noticing how this game is right six minutes has already passed only three ships are dead and it's gonna be a really rough game I see, the, I see the French battleship is pushing in. I ping it. I'm trying to get people to focus it down because it has to die here. If she gets this push off successfully, 
there's a crossfire forming right here. Rest is going out wide, and then the Borgonia is going through the sea cap. This is going to create a perfect crossfire between these two ships, focusing Mino, focusing Palmer, right? So we have to remove this ship from the board. I don't know why Colbert is using ASW. Oh, there's a submarine there. Ah. But yeah, we go for the strike. I have to DOS any type of damage that I can. Somehow gets overpins. It's on a French battleship, which is absurd. But <clears throat> I was I decide, hey, C cap is way too far for me. I need to focus on A cap. We need because we need a cap. If we control A and B and they push C, we can easily rotate around and we can easily get um you know we can regain uh, game control i push up aggressively to this island because i need to make a play i need to minimize the amount of time that i'm flying to my next target so that's why i push up there sometimes you have to push up aggressively give up some of your hp um because your ship's hp is a resource right you're not going to be threatening your ship many times in the match so might as well use it i get off a pretty nice torpedo run a lucky flood and uh, I'm just trying to focus out the isolated targets. My Atari is with the Palmer, so I'm not going to go there. I'm going to try to focus out the Tier 8 Hampshire. And I think we land three Torps here. I think she dies, actually. I only land two. I land all three, and that's a broken rudder and broken engine. So then my submarine is there. It's going to finish it off, hopefully. Is it? His easy piece down. Yep. Nice. Good job, Salmon. And now, die bomber run again. I'm looking at the Palmer, but I know there's an annoying MVR here who's fighter build, and he's constantly protecting the Palmer, so I gotta fly around, um, extending my flight time, which is pretty annoying, but... And then the Minotaur opens up, I was like, okay, the Minotaur is there. Okay, the Nahimov is here. So what this means is I can actually help my team push up all the way, because Nah the carrier is slowly reversing, which means because he only has one strike, um, available per attack run, that drastically lowers his damage output. So I'm going to be trying to get rid of this Nakimov as much as possible, try to threaten him, make him move, instead of just sitting in sitting over at ACAP. We do some damage to him, I mean like, I'm trying to get as much damage as possible, trying to show him that hey, uh, I'm a threat as well. Well, my goal was just trying to actually make him turn broadside, so like try to get the Goliath to do anything. But I mean, Goliath AP is just so horrendous at range. So um, that's kind of a mistake on my part. I'm trying to go after the, the Nakimo again, trying to get greedy. But this strike is a pitiful one because he drops fighters perfectly in front of me. So I lose his entire squad. It's uh, pretty sad. But um, yep. So the game. Now we kind of stabilized. We did take the uh, the lead. We are in control of the B cap. My whole entire team did a really good job rotating out of C cap and actually creating like a wall here. So they all have shots on the Ohio. They have shots on the breast if she opens up. I don't know why we haven't kept A cap. I was kind of confused as well. You see, I'm like I'm pinging A cap as well, but I mean, oh well. I was really concerned because if we lo if we lost the game and we still didn't cap A cap, it's. <laughs> That's uh, very frustrating, very confusing as well, so... But uh, yeah, so... The Palmer... Right now, we're just trying to we're just trying to kill a target. Any target. And the most obvious one is the Palmer. It's the lowest HP, easiest target to strike. I'm sure as hell not gonna go after the Minotaur, that's off-limits. Palmer... Weak anti-air... Slow uh, rudder... Easy target. Now it's for the Odin. Odin's up next. Focus out the Odin. And now pretty much the game is pretty much secured. Um, not really much to talk about. Like we focus, focus the Odin, focus the Minotaur, kill off the Nakimov. Rest is already gonna be controlled by these three ships over here. I'm not really too worried. Goliath is on her in his, in her own world, but oh well. And the rest of the game, we're pretty much just trying to finish the target. But unlucky RNG, right? It's MVR things, right? MVR things. Um, finish off the Odin here, but. Yeah, that's pretty much going to be the end of the video. Not much else to really talk about other than your early game matters a lot. Early game is the biggest, most impactful moment in the game that gives your team that extra lead and a snowball. That's probably my biggest tip out of the entire video. Properly deciding which target to focus down early on. In this case, I'm going to show it here. The first torpedo run, I go after the, the Des Moines. That's why he was half HP. 
focusing down on priority targets or heavier units like um radar cruisers cruisers that are more likely to hide on islands ships that cannot heal for example these kind of ships are all really easy to for you to focus down so mid to late game they are handicapped and they can't do anything about it let me jump forward to my uh my die bomber run let me see here Des Moines is half hp to me because i landed four torps on him and then with this strike two citadels he's only got like 1k hp he can only heal like up to 6,000, 8,000 HP. He's out of the fight till God knows how long. <laughs> till he gets multiple heals off. And even then he can't heal it all back because it's citadel damage, it's torpedo damage. He won't be able to heal it. But because of this early game push, the Des Moines, out of the picture. cannot can, He cannot peek out of this island after he radars to deal with any of my ships. So he's stuck there. I don't know how much damage. I'm actually curious how much damage he got this game. But I'm assuming it's very little. Because you see, he was not spotted at all. <laughs> he was not spotted at all. If we're looking here, these are Minotaur's uh, shots. Um, Hampshire's over here. And I don't see... Uh, let me see. The Moines has to peek, up fi peek out finally to get that some shots off. But even still, he peeks out and then he just gets blapped off the <laughs> out of the game. So that's easily a ship that's removed just removed from the game you, you can't do anything so early game just leading up to snowballs it's really is really dependent on the carrier player or the destroyer player and then the battleship to line up the shots or anything like that but you as a carrier player can open up that that um you can pretty much create an opening so you can help your team finish off targets you spot them you create a crossfire you force them to turn with torpedoes or your AP rockets or anything like that. And they, they have to decide, do I take this torpedo run or do I show full broadside and turn against, uh, you know, to the enemy team? It's like that. So that's, those are like the simple tips I can pretty much give when you're trying to figure out which target to focus down when there's multiple targets that are available to you. Um, trying to find another example here, but, you know, it's like, there's so many opportunities, so many moments where, um, you know, a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of situations pop up where you, you just kind of get a little bit like confused, not confused. What's the word? You get a little stuck trying to figure out which target would be the best one for you to focus down. Almost always a lot of, a lot of newer players, a lot of newer or more in inexperienced players. Uh, especially carrier players tend to focus out the battleships because generally the anti-air is weaker weakest um out of the other classes they're the biggest targets they're slowest they have the most hp providing the most damage to farm so that's why a lot of, i see a lot of carrier players going after battleships over the lone destroyer that needs to be focused out or that radar cruiser that can be dealt with um to create an opening just to get 50k damage added to your stats like sometimes target prioritization is you give up your your damage to secure the win and i see a lot of carrier players ignoring that and just not thinking about that and just going after battleships or even cv sniping right to get the most amount of damage and i see a lot of people um i see a lot of people posting on discord or subreddits and stuff they're like talking about oh, i got a 300,000 damage carrier game my team all died. I was the last one alive. You know, my team sucks, all that kind of stuff. And so it's like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, wow, he got a 300k game. That's really good. But he lost. So that's very unfortunate. But surely there could have been something that he could have done to try to make it a little bit of a, you know, try, try to give him a bit more of an advantage, right? But still, I mean, you know, anything can happen. It's a 12v12 PvP game, so, um, uh, you know, it's filled with everyone of different skill levels and such, so I can't really put an exact answer to it because there's so many things that can happen in a match and so many choices that you can make to push to that win or to potentially throw the game. And there is no correct answer for this kind of stuff. It just comes with experience and you as the player um, in control of the carrier to decide for yourself 
and I can only provide as much tips you know, as I possibly can, but there's always going to be a better option and there's always going to be a bad option, right? So, yep, that's going to be pretty much the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions or any um, any future video requests, just let me know. I'll see what the what majority of you guys ask for or talk about and then I can pick that as my next video. Uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.